It's time to go beyond the headlines Cause I don't put in overtime just so I can headline Okay, now it's Fox Sports, I'm live with Renee Going hard every day, sports rapping every play Different segments for your favorites Coming at you daily with positive vibes Yeah, we some game changers Basketball, football, soccer With different interviews, you never know who may pop up Listen, <laughs> only on Beyond the Headlines This is Beyond the Headlines <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. We're Renee Washington. It is playoff time in the WNBA. So joining me, we have WNBA and NCAA women's basketball reporter Ariel Chambers joining the show. Welcome to the Beyond the Headlines with Renee Washington, Ariel. Hey, go hey. <laughs> Glad to have you on. Perfect time to have you on because. We are in the most exciting part of the league, of the season, the playoffs, and it doesn't get any more exciting than this. We had the first round and the second round are over, and now we get into the best of five semifinals starting Tuesday night, which will be the night before the show runs. So we're not sure what will happen in those games just yet, but we can touch on what has happened so far. And I think we have to start off with the second round games that we saw. The Sparks beat Seattle. Kind of mm-hmm. But then yeah, we was, saw yeah. the Aces. Oh, my goodness. The Aces, Derek Hamby with the buzzer beater. A crazy play. They beat Chicago. They're on the semifinals. What have you been seeing? Girl, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Before we even continue this, just know <laughs> that I was on a bus watching it um, because, like, New I York, love it. and you know you're traveling everywhere. And so I'm, like, screaming on the bus. I'm like, yeah. So, anyway, back story. But keep going. <laughs> yes, I love that. It's kind of one of those plays, like, where were you when this happened? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I love that it was just—it was a broken play. She gets the steal. She just instinctively, naturally grabs it, shoots. Perfect timing. Balls off in time. They win the game. They're headed to the semifinals. Have you been seeing any spectacular performances from any players this postseason so far that really stand out to you, or even surprised you a little bit? It's just funny because, like in Dierica's situation in particular, it was like the luck was on her side. <laughs> it wasn't the right time at all. She had Sydney Colson <laughs> wide open under the basket and. And he was like, D, I love that you made the shot, but what were you thinking? And Derrica was like, girl, I panicked. And that was the truthfulness <laughs> of it. I mean, she just had to have the best day ever because, I mean, first you get six women of the year. You find out about that earlier in the day. Right. Then your daughter's freaking adorable walking you in like she's like blue ivy to her Beyonce. And then now you make this shot that's almost mirrored the um, Teresa Weatherspoon back in the day with the Liberty. So that's just like an iconic moment. But like right before that, it was, you know, Kelsey Plum's buzzer beater at, at um, in the third quarter. And then you had yes. Raquana Williams with the buzzer beater um, for the Sparks also in the third quarter. So it's just dope to see players be, like, so clutch during those moments. Yeah, and you make a good point. I mean, that play specifically for Derrick, the ball, the way she stole it and was able to shoot, it was like the, per- the ball didn't bounce funny. Like, it perfectly was in her hands so and she could almost <laughs> catch and shoot. It doesn't get like, any better than straight that. Straight through the net. The- Perfect. Literally. God, look at God. <laughs> but honestly, we have – those are the types of plays that we have been seeing. And you talk about Kelsey from third quarter buzzer beater. That really, like, any basketball fan – and I know they're, like, all over social media right now. It's becoming uh, something that everyone's talking about, which is always exciting to see for any women's sports, that people are following and excited, just like we are, to see these talented women making big plays and making some jaw-dropping plays that have you, like – Wow, that just happened. <laughs> 100%. So I, it's just like, I just love a, that. whether or not people agree with when she did it, which she doesn't even know if she agrees with when she did it, but whether or not they agree, it's just a dope shot, a dope moment. And I just, I am really excited to see people so happy um, with the results of the second round. Like, that's just a dope thing to see it trending on Twitter. And I know we should be the, past the point of gratefulness for that, but it, it, it's exciting every time. The playoffs is, never disappoint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what? That's one of those games that, I mean, of course, if you are, you know, an Aces fan, you're more excited, obviously, mm-hmm. um, than the poor Chicago fans. But these are the types of games that you want to see. I mean, you look at the first round and the second round, you know, you, you don't want to see a 20-point win in any way. You know, you want to see those down-to-the-wire games where you don't really know who's going to win. It's like a, a broken play turns into a game-winning play, and now everyone is kind of excited or – super disappointed but that's what the playoffs are all about you know it's, it's that yeah i mean to see somebody step up 
it was really heartbreaking to see Chicago go out like that because it was just a very special Chicago team this year. Their mindset was completely different than I've seen in the past, and that shout-out to Coach Wade. And you could just tell they had each other's backs this year. They were moving with a different speed. They were very dangerous. I know a lot of Mystic players didn't want to face them, so I'm glad that, like, they had that impression on people. And Courtney Vandersloot has no reason to hang her head low. Um, mm-hmm. You know, things happen in sports. And just, like, honestly, the luck wasn't on their side that night. Um, but as far as Chicago, they're going to be a really deadly team in the future. And that's, like, really, really, like, I can't wait. I can't wait till next season just to see. And then, like, Diamond came into her own this season, and she's just a freak athlete, and I'm obsessed with her. And when she has that with the talent of, and veteran leadership of Allie Quigley and Courtney Vandersloot, it's just it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you hate to see any team go out like that, but Chicago Sky, they've got greater things coming in the future. I think I could definitely agree with that. Um, so now moving forward into the semis, we've got our best of five, no longer single game elim- elimination. The Sparks are taking on the Connecticut Sun, and then we've got the mm-hmm. number one Washington Mystics team I've been covering taking on the Las Vegas Aces. So what do you expect? We'll start with the Sparks Sun matchup. This is the opportunity for the Connecticut Sun, who have made the finals three out of the four last years. We have the Sparks, who haven't made it to the finals in since 2005. Um, and now they have this chance to get back. I mean, what are you expecting from this series? Yeah, I think that's just a little backwards because uh, L.A. Connecticut sorry, just does not wrong. do You know, it's okay. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're totally fine. No, I was like, that's okay. Not, that's okay. Not right. <laughs> they're not uh, a very postseason type of team. They, they haven't had the best luck in, um, you know, coming together postseason and making that run because they just didn't have the veteran leadership for that. But I think they're more seasoned this year. The problem is, with L.A., L.A. knows how to beat Connecticut. They, they've won the series between them in the regular season, and they have the mm-hmm. playoff mentality, the, the veteran um, leadership to actually go far in it. It's just funny because Connecticut's so fast, such a speedy team, and L.A. is, like, known for being one of the slowest offenses. So it's just a matter of who can trap them into each other's pace, like which one can control the game in that way. Um, L.A. knows how to play in a hostile environment. And um, Connecticut's honestly not the worst environment to play in. The fans are great out there, but, like, they're not as hostile as they could be, like, when they play in Minnesota or Seattle. So right. I have L.A. winning this, like, this round, this whole series. So we'll see how that goes. But as far as making it to the finals, I'm, my money is on L.A. You know, I have to agree with that. I mean, I, I – watch the Connecticut Sun in the regular season. And they are obviously, num- you know, a top team for a reason, but I just do not mm-hmm. think they have that poise. And you get to the playoffs, it's a whole different beast. And for the Spurs, mm-hmm. having been in this position so many times, you know, it's, it's a mental grind as much, as much as it is a talent and physical thing. So I feel like that is honestly a game changer in itself when you now have the longevity of a five-game series, best of five series, versus just one and done. You know, one game, mm-hmm. that's all you lock in for that one game. Now you have to focus on winning at home and on the road, and I think it's a Mm -hmm. whole different beast in itself. So we'll see what happens there. I think that is going to be an exciting series with that 2-3 matchup. We do also have um, the Mystics, who were the first team to clinch the playoff spot and have been rolling this season, which has been exciting for the D.C. area altogether. Uh, Mm -hmm. And they actually have a chance to get back to the finals. But up first, they got to take on the Aces, who we know was the only one of the only teams to beat them at home in the regular season. Which, again, in the best of five, you got to be able to win on the road and at home. So, what are your thoughts on this? Do the Aces kind of continue off their high of the last win to get this first game Tuesday night? What are your thoughts? Of course, by Wednesday, we'll know if your predictions right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the, no Aces move. <laughs> the Aces move in waves. So they very well could, you know, bank off that energy that they, you know, that win in uh, with the Erica Hamby, her shot. But what they need to worry about is not having a deficit going into the last moments of the game. They like to, mm-hmm. you know, dig themselves into a hole and dig themselves out of that same hole. They can't do that with D.C. D.C.'s too deadly. They're too lethal. And they have... You know, we ha- they haven't announced the MVP, but they have Elena Deladon, 
on their exactly. team, with the, which is a 50-40-90 player, and that nobody else in the WNBA is that. So it's just a matter of the efficiency that D.C. has and the consistency that they have and it's, they're not running on highs and lows and momentum shifts. They're running on – they've just been freaking good. So, uh, you know, with the series, D.C. is winning it, and those two losses that Vegas had to D.C. were uh, 20-point margins. So it, it wasn't exactly. like they beat them up a little exactly. bit. Exactly. So it's, it's – I, my money is definitely 100% on D.C. If not a sweep, it's going to be in four games. DC is going to make it to the finals. My like, it's not so hot of a take. I think it's going to be DC LA for the finals. Like, I don't see anything else happening with that unless Kurt Miller can do something differently with this Connecticut team. But I don't see the Aces being as uh, ready to beat yeah. DC as DC is ready to beat them. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think. For the Mystics, they are a team that they're lethal. You look at their offense, they are averaging, you know, way over 90 points a game. They also have a number of players besides Elena Deladon who, you know, unofficially will most likely be the MVP of the season, hands down. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just her. When you look at their roster and you look at the fact that they have players like Natasha Cloud who's getting assisted and getting defensive stops, you got Christy Tolliver, you know, they, they have players that come off the bench and can get a double-double or, or you know, make big plays. It's just a team that has depth, that is offensively one of the best to ever come to the league. And the Aces, as you mentioned, it wasn't close. And the win that they got, there was no Elena Deladon. So you've got all these facts, but I do think that this is a series that we're going to see, you know, really, if the Mystics can stay healthy, which is something that hurt them last season when they were facing the Seattle Storm in the finals, you know, health is always an issue because, as we saw, when Elena Deladon went down, they, they did go on a, a very small three-game losing streak. So, um, hey, I, I agree with you on that. It's not as much of a sh- surprise. It's just, like, if the Aces, they are the true underdog. So if the Vegas uh, odds are in their favor, mm-hmm. who knows? But I do see the Mystics coming at it. So your prediction is a Mystic L.A. Spark WNBA championship. That's what you're going. A hundred percent. And I said that at the beginning of the season. And also another thing that sets DC oh, apart okay. from Vegas is the Bill Lambert. He's very vocal about not having a true point guard. I think Natasha Cloud yes. is DC's true point guard. She knows how to like, you know, command the floor. She knows how to delegate what she wants on that floor. And then she's like, um, honestly, like the backbone of that team. And then you have like, whenever Ariel powers is hurt, you have an athletic Chitori Walker Kimbrough that can step in the play. Like there's just so many elements to DC. So I agree with you on depth, but yeah, absolutely. LA um, Sparks and uh, Washington Mystics finals, like hands down. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, then I'm going to take it a step further. So when we do get to that, that's the five series. I hate to overlook the semifinals because they haven't even started yet as of this conversation that we're having. Um, but do you, what are your thoughts on who's going to come out of that? I mean, we know we've been seeing for the Mystics. One of their issues right now has been Christy Tolliver, who's still been battling that right knee injury. Mm-hmm. Um, for the L.A. Sparks coming in, you know, they are essentially the underdog coming against the top Washington Mystics. What are your thoughts? and predictions moving forward once we do get into the final two teams. <laughs> it's definitely the mystic tier to win the whole thing. It just is. They have a chip on their shoulder from last year. They're, mm-hmm. they're really, really wanting to win. I mean, and it, 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 there's no, I really don't think that um, as far as age and, and physical ability that the, the Sparks can hang on and win this year. I think the mystic can run them down. Uh, it just is what it is. I know the one time they beat the Mystics by, I mean, the Mystics beat the Sparks by 30. It was 95 to yeah. Like, it just, it, it's, it's painful. It's painful. And I think that's how it's going to be. I just have nightmares about last year when the Mystics ran through <laughs> the Sparks. And it, I think it will be very similar this year. And it's, it's not saying anything against the Sparks because they are a very developed team, a very you know, seasoned, well-seasoned, well-trained, well-coached, well-playing team. But I just think that the, what the Mystics have an advantage of is they can get out and run, 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 and they can actually make, like, athletic things happen at a pace that I, like, just can't keep up with, especially if um, the Mystics control the tempo. 
Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think one of the incredible things to watch now at this point is that you look at these teams' rosters and you see the amount of talented players they have on their team. But mm-hmm. you still look at the fact that someone like the Washington Mystics are still head and shoulders above, at least in the regular season they have been, um, head and shoulders above everyone. But, yeah. like, on, on tape, like, these are the best players, and I know every professional league is, but, I just, like, if you look at what types of careers these women have had in college, you, you cover NCAA women's basketball, and mm-hmm. now they're in the WNBA, and they can even compete with the Mystics and keep it a, a game closer than 20, 30 points. I mean, that is remarkable and speaks so much to the talent of the Mystics, you know, that they yeah. are able to, again, these teams that I'm like, wow, this I used to love watching this player play in college, and I love watching her at Duke or Baylor or UConn or wherever, and now they can't even keep up. And that's, a, that's a credit to um, Coach T because what he does, he finds mm-hmm. the diamonds in the rough, and he will give them an opportunity to play in the upper level, and he actually coaches them to that level. Like, nobody was checking for Natasha Cloud when she was getting, like, nobody. leaving college. She went to a mid major, like, Joe's, I mean, she no. started out in Maryland, but, like, St. Joe's, come on. And, like, Ariel Atkins was also slept on. There's so many elements to how Coach T builds from the inside out, and that's just dope. And then you also have Christy Tolliver, who has a championship mentality because she won a championship with exactly. the Spartans. So she, she just knows how that is, too. And so that's going to carry them far. That with their youthfulness, it's, it's, it's just... It, even at the Sparks' best, I just don't see them being able to keep up with the Mystics for this this series. Um, but I will say that Candace Parker, whatever the players said that she's overrated, she has been playing impeccably since. And honestly, she's yes, been playing yes. impeccably this season when she came back from that injury, 20 pounds lighter, and she's just been going in. And I'm just like, yes, sis, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, and I, I love seeing her get back to being a, a top player because she, she's always been fun to watch. So it's yeah. good to see her kind of, you know, get back to being, you know, more in shape, more fit, and what better time for the spark. But I do I, like... I mean, shout out to her she, because she... Go ahead. Yes. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Shout out to her because she created the new game. Like, she created that mm-hmm. positionless basketball. And, like, well, let's not get it twisted. Like, everybody knows. Like, I'll say it uh, completely. I'm a Sparks fan. That's, like, my team. But, like, I'm obviously talking to you in an unbiased way. But, like, Candace Parker created the new age basketball. And Absolutely. I, you have to respect it. So, like, shout out to her for reading those comments from the athletic, even if she did or didn't. But uh, shout out to the universe receiving those and her just being like, all right, bet. Let me show you what I can do. So, I mean, that's one that she just she loves to win. So I, I, I can't wait to see her performance, and I can't wait to see her in Chelsea, whatever craftiness they have going on during the series. But, like, I just still don't see it um, topping the Mystics. Yeah, no, I agree. And I love that Candace Parker has been really, like, paving the way for the WBA to – to reach new heights in terms of fans. So you even see what she's doing outside of the league so to work with Turner and NBA TV. I mean, she's really, she is really like a trailblazer for women's basketball as a whole. So, yes, I agree, but I also agree that this is just not a matchup that they're ready for, you know. So, Mystics, I'm thinking this is their year, and especially after last year with, you know, you can, for me, I know I can feel it and hear the difference in and around the Mystics that, you know, they are, they have been focused since they got swept last year to get back and win it this year. So I think this is the, their time. But, Ariel, where can our listeners follow and, and uh, stay tuned in along with all that you have going on in your basketball coverage? <laughs> <laughs> if you want my basketball coverage, my Twitter is Ari Ivory. But I like to keep it consistent through all social media. So between uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, if you're, you know, a different crowd. Ari Ivory, A R I I V O R Y. And you, you'll see a lot of mixed things on my Instagram, so it's kind of confusing. They're like, she's like, do you model? Do you sports? Whatever. But Twitter is where do. a lot of my. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have your head in everything, girl. But yes, yeah, you so have to be a, man, a woman of many talents. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. So that's where you guys can follow me. Yes, she models, she talks sports, she does everything. So check her out. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> girl. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on Beyond the Headlines with Renee Washington this week. It has been a pleasure to, to have somebody on. Finally, you're my first WNBA guest, which I'm ashamed to say, but excited to say also. Hopefully the first. Okay, many. let's keep that momentum uh, coming. Anytime you want to talk yes. women's basketball, I'm down. 
Yes, I love it. For sure. Absolutely. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me.